What's going on? Come on in. It's Testimony Tuesday live time and I am live, live, live. I don't... Where is everybody? I need you to hit that share button for me as you're coming in. Opening praise song is I Believe by Ray Ellis featuring Travis Green. I do not own the rights to the music, but I have permission to play as an opening praise worship song. I do not own the rights to the music. I want to say that first. We just planned it as an opening worship praise song. So come on in, and as you're coming in, I need you to hit that share button for me. Let everybody know. Testimony Tuesday live is live and in living color. Come on in as you're coming in. Come on in to the worship song. Worship song is I Believe by Ray Ellis. And it's featuring Travis Green. It all ties really into what the Holy Spirit led word is today. Hey Sheila, how you doing? I'm glad to see you. Hey my friend down there in Alexandria, my BFL. Good to see you. You always on point. Hey Lo. I hope things are going a little better today. What's up, Ingrid Fanay Johnson? Attorney Ingrid Fanay Johnson. I see you. What's going on? We're listening to I Believe by Ray Ellis speaking Travis Green. And the name of the song is I Believe. How many of you believe that it all belongs to him? Yes, even we, even me, even you belongs to him. Come on in and as you're coming in, I need you to hit that share button for me to let everybody know. Love you too, Sheila. Yes, come on in, come on in. What y'all weather like down there in Alexandria? Is it nice and still breezy? Because where I'm at, it's a beautiful, beautiful day. The sun is shining and it's just a up, up, up feeling today. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go out and exercise or go out and just waste some time and let the sun hit me today because it's so pretty. Nice, cool breeze. I'm ready for the fall weather. I don't know about you all, but I am ready for the fall weather. As you come in, hit that share button for me and get your worship on. Okay, it's nice and cool down in Alexandria. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. Yes. Oh, it's a beautiful day in Atlanta. Okay, all right then. Praise the Lord because we know some other parts of the map is not doing so good today. And we want to continue to pray for them because we have all experienced bad weather. From Texas to Louisiana, we've had our share too. And not that we're wishing it bad on another part of the map, but we thank God for the break that he's given us. And we're praising and we're going to pray for those people who are enduring uh, the tropical storm that's out there uh, going in toward the Florida state. We're going to lift them up. Oh, that's good, Ingrid, going for a run outdoors. Oh, yeah, that's a good positive one for sure. Yes. 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 It all belongs to him. Yes. Come on in. And as you're coming in, hit that share button for me. We thanking God for another day of the day where we can all see the bright sunshine, that it is good. Yes. Oh, you recommended me to go Ron Inger instead of just to go uh, walking out and getting some fresh air? Okay. Hey, Sean. Thank you for joining me. I want y'all to hit the share button as you're coming in. Again, our praise song is I Believe by Ray Ellis and and it's featuring Travis Green. He's one of my favorites, too, gospel singers, artists, rather. Let me stop saying singers because a couple of my young mentees said, Miss Anita, you need to say artists. Quit saying song. And I, I said, okay, let me start addressing them as gospel artists. Okay. You know, our young generation, they'll get us in check to bring us up to date to where we need to be. That's why I love having communication with our younger people. 
Yes, come on in. So we're going to go on and get into this Testimony Tuesday Live. First, giving honor to God and thanking Him this, this afternoon. Welcome, welcome, welcome all the viewers, those who are for first time. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you who are returning, welcome. I thank you for returning and coming back, taking time out of your busy day for Testimony Tuesday Live. You could have been anywhere else, but you are here. And so I'm so grateful and thankful that you are here. Those who listen to the replay, I'm thankful for you too, because I've been seeing a lot of replay listeners and you're making the comments. So thank you so much for taking the time out to listen to the replay. I want to send a special shout out to those of you who are live with me right now. I appreciate you. I am Anita Johnson, merchant known as the prayer advocate for those who don't know, and I am sold out to prayer. Now, what does that mean? Psalms 116 and 2, you know I'm going to say it because he bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath. That is one of the mottos of why I am called the prayer advocate. And so why am I called the prayer advocate? Because I help educate, equip, and encourage women of all walks of life to first establish a prayer life, if they have none, then on how to maintain consistency and put things in place to help them maintain their prayer life. That is what I do. And right now we're in the middle of the uh, signature course that I offer called the Prayer Incubator. And it's going really well. God is really, really good. And so I want to invite you. The next time it will be opening up is in January of 2025. So think about it. Do you need to increase something or change something or, or get motivated about your prayer life? The prayer incubator is a course you may want to consider. And again, the next session is going to start in January. If you want more information or you're interested for the next session, you can go ahead and email me at visualsofprayer at gmail.com and I will send you the information. But I want to encourage you to first pray about it before you inquire because it's going to take some work, some dedication, and some of your time to walk through the prayer incubator. And I don't know about you, but I don't like to waste my time and I don't want to waste your time. So pray about it. Uh, if you also have a church or you know of a church that need to establish a prayer ministry, I have worked with two churches in the past year, the past months of this year, where they needed to establish a prayer ministry at their church, or they had one and it just was not growing, it wasn't motivated, they wasn't getting a lot of the members to participate. And I've had the opportunity to go to their physical location on a Saturday. We spent four hours through the prayer incubator to encourage, to equip, and to get those people who are at the church motivated to join their prayer ministry or to establish one. So if you know of a church that who needs to establish a prayer ministry, because believe it or not, you should have a prayer ministry at your church because that's your foundation. I'm going to say that one more time. That's your foundation of any church. In God's word, I'm not saying this. This is what he said. His house is a house of prayer first. And then all those other things come behind that. And you want to have a prayer ministry at the church that you're a member of to cover the, to cover the people, to cover the pastor, to uh, cover the building, to cover the things that is going on, uh, things that you're trying to do or your church is trying to establish. You need a prayer ministry at your church to cover all those things, to constantly pray, to keep your shepherd, your head covered from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. It's good to have a choir. It's good to have an usher board member. It's good to have all those other ministries in the church. But if your church don't have a prayer ministry, your church is not covered. I want to encourage you. You may be, uh, God might be talking to you and saying, go speak with your pastor and say, Pastor, God has given me a vision of us establishing a prayer ministry at our church. We don't have one and we really need one. You may be surprised how your pastor may be on the receiving end. When you pray and ask God, if you're the one, he will touch your pastor and those involved to establish that ministry. And so if you know of a church or you know of someone, you can reach out to me and I can work with you all to get that ministry going or to 
improve your prayer ministry at the church that you are at. So if you're interested or you know that your, your church may be interested, you can email me at visualsofprayer.gmail.com. We can work something out and we can either do it by teleconference, Zoom, or I can come to your location. So let's get into uh, the announcements. My YouTube channel is starting to really grow, and I appreciate those of you who have already subscribed, who go and listen to the replays of the Testimony Chooses. And some of you have been commenting on things that I post that I have not posted on my other platforms. So I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you have not subscribed to the Prayer Advocate YouTube page, what are you waiting on? It's free, free, free. Free. And y'all know how you like that free, free, free stuff. Well, it only requires you to do one little click, subscribe, and another little click, like, and another little click, share. That's all that it is asking of you. And so I want to encourage you and I want to ask that you go to my YouTube channel. I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel and I need your help. Go and subscribe. And, and make a comment there to let me know you've been there. I will appreciate you. And last announcement is journaling on Sunday mornings. God has been really, really good speaking. I've been getting a couple of texts from the women that who have been coming on saying how much they didn't realize they didn't take the time to sit still and listen to what God has to say. I want to encourage you. Set your alarm like you do for everything else for 6 a.m., we're there for 25 minutes at the longest. You come and you sit still with your journal. We pray over our journals before we start. And we let God pour and speak into us instead of us asking him or saying something to him. And we write in our journals during the quiet time. You will be surprised what you may be missing because you are busy, 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 moving, 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 and you're not slowing down enough to hear what he has to say. Believe it or not, he's powerful when you are quiet and he has your attention to speak. So join us on Sunday mornings from 6 to 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. I usually post the uh, Zoom link on Saturday so that you can get yourself prepared and ready. Keep in mind, we all need to hear from God. So drum roll, you know, the drum roll is Testimony Tuesday's shout out goes to Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. Now you all may know Dr. Cheryl and you may not, and I'm going to give you a little bit of information on her, but today's Testimony Tuesday shout out goes to Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. She's a mindset coach. She's an author. She's a speaker and a filmmaker. Now, what I love about Dr. Cheryl is this. Dr. Cheryl gravitates, she shares, she leads, and she uh, motivates women over 40. Now, I'm not discriminating against y'all under 40 at all, because you can still get something from Dr. Cheryl too. But she really key in on women in the older generation, okay? She really is a woman that if you don't follow her, and she's not asking me to do this. She didn't tell me to do this. But I usually let God lead me with someone who has blessed my spirit and my soul. And I have gleaned from for a long time to really know that they are called by God. Dr. Cheryl has been called by God. And why do I say that? Because when you go to listen to her podcast or you, you follow her on Instagram. This is for my women over 50. Because I'm 63. You're never too old to be motivated. You're never too old to learn. You're never too old to change. And you're never too old to learn things that you thought you knew just because you've been on this earth. Well, you know how sometimes we'll say, well, I've been on this earth all these years. And you fail and begin to think you know everything when you really don't because God is always pouring something new into someone else to pour into you. So I'm sharing this because I want you to go to her Instagram page, and I want you to start tuning into her podcast, Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. Her podcast name is this. It's eye-catchy, it's ear-catchy. It's named Age, Fearless, and Unscripted. Now, Dr. K now, Dr. She, when I say unscripted, now, that don't mean she raw and she cuss and do all that kind of stuff. Nope, it's none of that. She's unscripted because she's unapologetic 
for being as bold as she is in her age bracket. That's why she uses the unscript part where we may think we need to sugarcoat everything to spare people's feelings or not really be who God has called us to be. Speak when God tells us to speak, what he tells us to speak. A lot of times as older women, we think, oh, I'm too old for that. Oh, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be motivated. Oh, I shouldn't be changing nothing. Oh, I shouldn't be walking out on faith in this kind of way. You know, we get all complacent and we get comfortable and the term that really just makes my spine go uh, 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 crack, cracking is when I hear an older woman say this. Well, that's just the way I am. And I'm going to go to my grave like that. Oh, my God. If I tell you, I just want to just scream when I hear older women, women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, who will say, that's just the way I am. And that's how I'm going to go to my grave. Stop saying that. I don't know about you, but I do not want to go to my grave the way I am today. I don't. And I'm praying and hoping that you who can hear the sound of my voice, you really think about that cliche when you hear people say that, what it really means. It means you're not open to anything new that God has for you. You're not willing to change because he gives us something to change all the time. And that you believe you have arrived. And there's nothing else for you to do on earth. I'm just saying, hey, Earl, good to see you. Hey, Kathy, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Nicey. So I'm just saying, subscribe to Dr. Uh, Cheryl P. Williamson's Instagram page. She's on Instagram. Subscribe to her. Go to her page, ladies, gentlemen. All of you who are listening to me now and who listens to the replay, it costs you nothing to go to Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson's page on Instagram, hit the like, subscribe button, and give her some words of encouragement. Ladies over 40, you should be subscribed to this woman's page. And when you go, you're going to see why I'm saying it. You can also tune into her podcast on YouTube. You can go to the YouTube and key in uh, the podcast age, fearless, unscripted, and it'll pop up where you can actually see her podcast that she does. Amazing, amazing woman. And she's not allowing her age to stop her from doing what God has called her to do. Go and subscribe. It costs you nothing. You're sitting there watching TV anyway. So why not get something added to what you already have? Let's go and support Dr. Cheryl P. Williamson. Now, my testimony and words of encouragement for where, uh, this week's Testimony Tuesday is this. This hopefully will deliver somebody because it did me. Sometimes... You have to pull back from things, people, and even places. You have to pull back. Now, why am I sharing this? I had prayed to God about a particular situation. Now, I'm not going to go into all the too many details because I, I, I don't want to put all of that out in the atmosphere or even on social media. And I asked God to direct me on what to do. I began to notice God was saying little things about this situation at different times. And I started to really pay attention. See, when God starts telling you things about something and he's consistently telling you things, he's, he's wanting to get your attention and he wants you to pay attention. So I started really paying attention. I started paying attention when, when, when I uh, got myself or uh, was in that certain situation or uh, around that certain situation, God would speak to me, pay attention, watch this, watch that, pay attention. So God brought something to the light. He allowed me to have an encounter, to physically see with my eyes, to witness when nobody else had to tell me what I was feeling was confirmation. How many of you have ever been in a situation around a person or in a certain place or doing something and you get a certain feeling and you have to just stop and God starts speaking to you to pay attention? 
Now, some of y'all so busy, y'all don't know when God's telling you to pay attention. Y'all don't know if he's saying, be quiet, sit down, shut up now. Because you, you can't hear him because you're just busy, busy, busy. But how you ever been in that situation like that? Where he brought you to it, he shined the light on it. And he even spoke to you that what you were feeling and thinking was true. I know somebody can testify to that. Somebody can, can put something in the chat and say, I've been in that position before. I know you have because that's the kind of God that we serve. Now, God gave me the confirmation. In other words, God answered the prayer I prayed for because I prayed and asked him if there was something I need to pay attention to, if it was something I needed to do different, if it was something I need to be aware of. I prayed that prayer. And he answered me. But the reason why I was able to grasp his answering of my prayer was because when he started speaking, I knew his voice and I paid attention. A lot of times we miss what God is wanting to tell us, show us, change, rearrange, do in us, or do uh, uh, about us because we miss hearing him and we're not paying attention. Never get too busy to where you can't hear him and you can't pay attention. I said all of this because it's going to tie in today's Testimony Tuesday, Holy Spirit led word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord of Lord, King of Kings, Abba, we come before you today and we just first want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for being who you are. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, as I go forth with what you've poured into me and I pour out to your people, I ask you to use me and remove me out of the way. I ask that you allow them to be on the receiving end and let them get something or whatever you want them to get out of what goes forth. Father, we love you today and we praise you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. By the way, um... Somebody had an instant messaged me or something uh, yesterday about my pen that says vote. Please vote. Please make sure. I hope they don't cut me out that you are registered. Yesterday was the last day to register in Texas. So I don't know about all the other uh, states, but pay attention. Oh, Lord Jesus, pay attention. God is speaking to all of us. Pay attention. And watch what he's telling you. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Today's Holy Spirit led word is this. And I really did love studying for this. Uh, allowing God to pour in me with this one. And it's this. Now you got to listen. Because you got to catch this to be able to understand the rest that goes forth. You prayed about it. Stop taking it back. And stop picking it back up. I'm going to say that one more time. You prayed about it. Stop taking it back. And stop picking it back up. Pretty powerful, right? Now, how many of you will honestly admit you have prayed to God for something or about something and have picked it back up? How many of you put it? I'm going to give you a minute. Put it in the chat. If you have prayed for something. But you picked it back up after praying for it. I know it's a lot of y'all here need to be typing me, me, me. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, me, me, me. Come on. I need y'all to type in the chat if it was if you've ever prayed about something and you picked it back up. Think about that as I move forward. What that really means is when you picked it back up, you tried to handle it. You tried to do it. I see you, Brenda. I see you. I see you, Kathy. I see you. I see you, Ingrid. Yes, you tried to do it when you picked it back up. Yeah, you went to the altar. Yeah, you got on your knees. Yeah, you prayed and you cried and you worshiped about it. You did all those things, right? But you went and you picked it back up. Think about it. Think about something recently. That you've prayed to God about, but you don't went pick it back up. Because you want to try to do it in your own way, in your own timing. Did you know the number one action for when we go to God and pray and we shouldn't pick it back up? 
we need to stop doing that is we have a problem with waiting. Uh-huh. That's the number one reason why we go back and pick it up because we have a problem with waiting. We've prayed about it. We've told him about it. We've wailed about it. We've talked about it. We've done all those things, but we go back and pick it back up. I don't know anyone who likes to wait. It, it's just one of those things with American people, especially we struggle with being patient and waiting. Not that other countries don't have the problem, but the United States of America tend to really have a problem with waiting, right? Now, what about you? Do you struggle with waiting? Do you struggle with sometimes with waiting on God when you've prayed about it and you say you're going to let God do it and you're going to give it back to him, but you still find yourself when you go pick it up? Waiting can cause us to be impatient, discouraged, worry, and even wonder if God hears our prayers or even care. Because we got to wait. So we get to start doubting and wondering, well, did God hit the prayer? Is God going to do something? You know, we're going to get to questioning God. We're going to get to all kind of things start coming up in our minds because we don't like to wait. Waiting can cause you to be impatient, discouraged. Oh, my God. Even worried to where you have sleepless nights. But throughout the word of God, he tells us about waiting on him. Now, I'm a sidebar here a little bit because there's a cliche of a scripture that is really used popular among the Christians about I'm going to wait on the Lord. Okay, I'm going to wait on the Lord. A lot of people misconstrued that. That they're not supposed to do anything because they're just going to wait on the Lord. Now, that's totally different from when you've went to him, you've taken the action and you prayed and you pick it back up. That's a totally different thing about I'm just going to wait on the Lord because you've already taken action. And then that's when you're supposed to wait on him. But when you're just doing nothing and you're saying, I'm going to wait on the Lord. What are you waiting on? Because there was no action. I wanted to... To reference that because that cliche scripture is used so, so, so just like, like it's just flopping like this. I'm going to wait on the Lord. He does tell us to wait on him throughout his word. He tells us to avoid doubting his goodness while we wait. But I'm going to share this with you. When we leave it at the feet of Jesus and not pick it back up. We're in alignment with waiting on the Lord. When we go to the Lord and we pick it back up, we're out of alignment of waiting on the Lord. I'm just going to say that. I'm going to share with you some things that we should do and could do while we're waiting on the Lord. Remember, we've prayed about it and we've decided that, no, I'm not going to pick it back up. I'm not going to go grab it. I'm not going to try to do it in my own strength. I'm going to wait. But here is some things that in God's word, he tells us how to be able to wait, why we should wait. Uh, number one, he says to focus on his promises. And how do we focus on his promises? Open your Bible. Open your Bible because the Bible is going to remind you of the promises that he's made. And oftentimes we fail to depend on our own wisdom or we seek someone else rather than the wisdom of God. My brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you, his word does not say go seek someone else first. Go get someone else's opinion first. We all know what he says. He says, seek him first. In Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, and this is the, the King James Version. Here's what he says. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path. That's what he says when you open your Bible and you read the word and he tells you about his promises. He says to trust in him. Not sidebar a little bit. Y'all know I'll go off and come back. Now, I'm not saying you should not ask someone else to pray for you or with you or, or to touch and agree with you. That's not what I'm saying. 
All I'm saying is that he says while we're waiting after we prayed and we're not going to pick it back up. We need to seek him first. You seek him first. Then you call your prayer partner or you ask the church to pray for you or the pastor, whoever, your BFF, whoever. Then you go to them. But you seek him first in prayer. You go to him first. Whatever it is, you go to him first. And then all those other things. Then you call your BFF and talk about whatever the situation is. Then you will go before the church and say, I need prayer or on a prayer call or whatever. You do that after you seek him first. We get that confused and, and people have an issue or they need wisdom. And the first thing they do is run to the church. They don't be to seek God first. They run to the church. They run to their pastor. Or they'll call their BFF on the phone. Instead of seeking him first. It's hard not to pick it back up when we don't seek him first. Another thing is. There's a difference between seeking and touching and agreeing. I hope you guys know that. There's a difference in seeking and touching and agreeing. You seek first and then you go and touch and agree. You have to trust God is working behind the scenes even though you can't see with your physical eye. Because a lot of us Christians, I'm just going going on harboring on Christians because we're the ones who, you know... If we can't see it, we don't want to believe it, but we are Christian. I'm just saying. You have to trust God working behind the scenes. Even though you can't see with your physical eye, you just have to trust and you just have to know that you know that you know that you went to him and you prayed. He heard the prayer and now you just have to wait. Number two, you can listen to praise music to soothe you, to keep you from going Somewhere else first instead of to your father. You can listen to praise music because believe it or not, God will answer your prayer through a praise song. Uh-huh. If you believe it or not, try it. See, this will help you with your anxiousness, your thoughts, because your thoughts start going all over the place. And, and you may be experiencing where think, your mind is telling you one thing. Your spirit is telling you another. Your soul is doing another thing. But when we go to him first... And we can go to him through praise and worship songs. We can listen to praise and worship songs and go into the presence of God. But what we shouldn't do is pick our prayer request back up. In Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and this is the message version. I love the message Bible. If you don't have a message Bible version, man, you missing out on some stuff. He says in Philippians 4, 6 through 7, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Here we go again. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Listen to this scripture because he's telling you directly what you need to do and the way you need to do it. A lot of times we miss God's instructions because we're not opening the Bible. We're not paying attention to his instructions. God is a one, two, three, ABC kind of God. He'll tell you what to do, how to do it, and he'll tell you the results of if you do it or if you don't do it. That's what I love about serving the God we have. You don't have to try to guess and wonder because he's a very direct God. He says in here, he says, number one, don't fret or worry. He says, instead of worrying, he says to pray, okay? He says, select petitions and praises, shape your worries into prayers, Letting God know your concerns. He also says, before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. He told you what not to do. He told you what to do. And he told you the results of if you do it. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Again, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, message version I suggest you get your Bible and you highlight that. Number three, you wait quietly. See, sometimes you have to be quiet. We have to honor God, allowing hope in him as, as more than people, places, and things, and, and things that we see or we gravitate to. Wait quietly. Wait quietly. Sometimes you just have to be quiet. 
to hear the answers that God have for your prayers. In Psalm 62 and 5, New Living Translation, it says this. Here he go again telling you what to do to keep you from picking it back up. He says, let all that I am wait quietly before God because my hope is in him. Sometimes you have to learn to keep your prayers between you and God. Uh-huh. That's waiting quietly. Sometimes you have to not call nobody, tell nobody, but you have to keep that request between you and God. And he tells us to wait quietly before him. Number four, you have to learn how to wait patiently to keep picking it back up once you take it to him. Don't allow yourself to be subjected to why you are waiting patiently, grumbling, complaining, discontentment, bitter, selfish. You have to wait patiently and you won't pick that thing back up. Go back down memory lane of what God has already done for you. Think about it. What has God already done for you? He says in Psalm 37 and 7a, New Living Translation, be still in the presence of the Lord. He's telling you what to do, be still. And he says, wait patiently for him to act. So he's telling you he's going to act, but you got to wait patiently for him to answer that prayer. And number, number five, my last one, this is the one that a lot of people struggle with. You got to wait expectantly. You got to wait and expect him to answer your prayers. I don't know about you, but there's not a prayer I pray that I don't expect him to answer. I expect him to answer. I have to expect him to answer when he's going to answer. And he's going he's gonna to answer when it's all for my good and what the good is for my good. When you get to that point with God where you just know and you expect him to answer the prayers you've prayed, the things you went to him about and with, and you haven't picked those things back up, you're not trying to grab them and do them in your own strength or do them your way, you expect him. You tell him, and he tells us we can come boldly to the throne of grace where we expect him to answer our prayers according to his will and his way. Sometimes he's not going to answer according to even what you specifically prayed for. He may change that thing up. He may say no to it all. He may even add something to it because it's according to his will and his way. We struggle a lot with allowing God to act on our behalf to do what we need him to do for us because we don't want to wait <clears throat> and because he doesn't answer it the way we expect him to. You still should have an expectancy. See, I expect God to work all things out for my good. I expect God to have me as the head and not the tail. See, I have expectations because he says that I can. And it says in Psalm 130, I wait expectantly, trusting God to help, for he has promised. We know God keeps his promises. He's not a God that will lie. How do we know all of these things and what we should do when we pray, we stop picking it back up and allow God to do what he says he's going to do is we have to trust God promises. As I close, think about this. While God may not answer in our timing or in the way we expect meaning we pray for something specifically, God will accomplish his will for we know all things of his work together for our good. With us knowing all things work together for our good, with us knowing that he is a man that he will not lie, we should not go back and pick up what we prayed for and laid at his feet. I hope this bless someone. You may be struggling right now where you've prayed to God about something and he's not moving as fast as you want him to or he hasn't answered you. It could be years sometimes before you'll get the answer. He has, you feel like he don't hear you or you feel like it's, you, you know, as this, is, this is what they'll say. I need a breakthrough in my prayer. Like my prayers, I, I need a breakthrough in my prayers. I need, a, I need God to do this because I prayed about it. You know, we get all caught up in 
the earthly things that we do. And we lose focus of the heavenly things he will do. So I want to encourage you. When you pray. Or if you've already prayed about some things. Don't go back and grab it back from him. Let it stay there at his feet. Wait patiently for him. Wait quietly for him. Uh, uh, listen to music to help you calm down where you won't be anxious for nothing. You know, we, we have to be reminded, you know, focus on God promises. And the way you will be able to do that is to open your Bible and read his word. Let's go to the throne of grace about picking it back up, not allowing God to do what God say he will do. We need to just stop it and we need to not pick it back up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that has went forth already, Father. We thank you for how your word will guide us. It will teach us. It will show us. It will give us examples. It will, it will, it will tell us your promises. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we want to say thank you for your word. We want to say thank you, Lord, that you still answer our prayers even when we get impatient. Even when we don't seem to want to wait, you are just that good of a God that you keep your promises and you still answer our prayers. But Lord, we want to ask you right now to forgive us where we have come to you about things through prayer. But we may have picked it back up because you haven't moved the way we wanted you to. You haven't done what we asked you to. We just don't feel like if you're hearing us, Father, forgive us. But we know you hear every prayer, every petition that go forth to you, Lord. So where we have fallen short, some prayers we may have already picked back up right now or before this time, Lord. We ask you to forgive us and we're going to lay them back at your feet and leave them there in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, there may be someone who can hear the sound of my voice who have prayed to you about some things that they're where They are hurt. They are concerned. They are tired. Uh, uh, they need to be refreshed. They need to know and hear that you heard what they prayed. Lord, you even, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, that you give them something to hold on to. Let their hope be strengthened. Let their patience come out, Lord, like never before. But let them not give up on what you have promised us of working all things out for our good. Lord, you said that if we seek you, we will find. You said if the door is open, you will walk through for us so that when we knock with our prayer request, Lord, you will hear them. And so we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that anyone who has a prayer request that has been sitting at your feet, in your presence, or one that may have been prayed just this morning, or right before Testimony Choose Live, whenever, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you give them patience, you give them the strength to, to not to grab it and pick it back up, or to, or to think that you're not hearing it. We ask you to give them that sense of peace, but most of all, give them hope like never before. Father, we know that everything we come to you about, you already know, Lord, but you said we have to open up our mouths and come to you and confess that thing and ask about that thing and share that thing and, and give it all to you. And so, Lord, help us with those things, Lord. We know your word gives us step by step. It tells us what to do and what not to do. So let us gravitate to your word, Lord. And even if we call someone to touch and agree, Lord, let us be reminded that we should come to you first. And then to other people in other situations and things, Lord. But let us be reminded that you are the God with all power, like none one else. So we thank you for knowing that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, who goes and intercedes on our behalf to you. Lord, we just thank you for him, Lord. Lord, He can. he's the one who can go like no one else on our behalf, Lord. He can even go better than we can for ourselves to you, Lord. So we thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for him, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for how prayer builds our relationship with you. We thank you for the, the tool of prayer to be able to come to you to be heard. When we have a broken heart, when we're tired, when we're weary, when we're just confused, Lord. When we're angry, when we're lonely, whatever it may be, Lord, we thank you that we can come to you. And so, Lord, you say in your word that Jesus sits at your right hand and he's interceding for us. 
So we thank you today for what you're going to do. We're thanking you in advance for how you're going to shift some things. You're going to change some things. Some prayers are going to come flooding in and you're going to answer these prayers, Lord, that these people who are listening to uh, have come to you about. We just trust and believe because you are God who shall not lie. You keep your promises. Lord, I ask that they not give up. That they stay steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in you so that they can get the peace, the patience that they need to wait and not go and grab and pick it back up and try to do it themselves. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that we have you, our Heavenly Father, Abba, our Father in heaven, looking down upon us, Lord, that we can come to to get what we need here on earth. It's in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You all be blessed. And I pray that this helps someone not to go back and pick it back up. We're going to stop picking it back up when we take it to Jesus and lay it at his feet. You all have an amazing, amazing rest of the day. Remember this. Let nothing good or bad interrupt your consistent prayer life. You all be blessed. Remember. Don't pick it back up. Leave it at the feet of Jesus. Be blessed. Thank you all for joining me. I appreciate you all. Share this with someone. Let them know that they don't need to pick it back up. Hey, Kiki, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you. You all have a blessed day. Thank you very much.